few weeks ago, um, we were doing uh, Healing University, and just it was Barry Bennett, if you're familiar with him. If you're not, check him out. But he's a teacher at Karis, and um, just something, that, a message that he had at the end of Healing University a few weeks ago really hit me. Again, it's one of those things where, you know, we hear this over and over and over, but it was just one of those moments where it was like, and I've heard this a hundred times, but something really impacted me. And just, it was just the, the idea of the importance of sowing the Word of God in our heart, the seed of the Word of God. And Pastor Chad did about half my message, I think. You know, it was, it's amazing how God, you know, you know we don't talk before service or anything and about what the other one's going to talk about, right? <laughs> it's so interesting and encouraging and affirming when, um, when Holy Spirit's just flowing. And, and uh, I so appreciate that. So that was pretty neat. Um, but we're going to get into this right away, um, but we're just going to go through today and just look at the importance of that incorruptible seed of the Word of God and how important it is to, to sow that in our heart. And um, there's, there's so many things I want to get into, and I'll, I'll try to make this uh, somewhat quick. Do you believe me? I bet you don't believe me. So um, let's get right into this. We're going to start in the Gospel of John. This is, this is one of those messages where it's like I feel like I'm pointing you in a direction and telling you don't stop no matter what you see, no matter what you experience, no matter what you feel. Keep going. Keep going in this direction. It's kind of just like in a nutshell, that's what I'm doing today. And uh, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, we're going to start in the Gospel of John. It's a very familiar verse, John 10.10. 10. It says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So we've all heard that verse, right? The Amplified Classic, that word abundantly means to the full, till it overflows, right? We see in this verse, stealing, killing, and destroying. We know if there's anything in our life, anything we see in life, if there's where it involves stealing, killing, or destroying, we know the root of that, right? We know where that came from. That's, that's the enemy, right? We know the old rule, God good, devil bad, right? Okay, that's, that's pretty good. We are, we're all on the same, same page with that. So how do we experience this abundant life that God desires for us? How do we walk in that and, and see that manifest in our life? Well, well I'm glad you asked, because uh, we're going to get into that. And again... Pastor Chad touched on this uh, in his message opening. It was beautiful. So we're going to go right into Romans, another very familiar verse, um, one of my favorites. This is uh, Romans 12, 2. It says, Do not be conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the best way to renew our mind as God's kids is through the Word of God, right? His Word is His will. His Word is His will. We are. This is a beautiful quote I heard from a pastor I listened to. It says, we are saved when we believe on Him. When we believe on Jesus, that's when we're born again. That's when we're saved. We are transformed when we think like Him. When we believe like Him. So we're saved when we believe on Him. We're transformed when we think like Him. How do you think he thinks? Well, it's revealed in the Word. Amen? Further down in chapter 12, uh, verses 9 through 21, we're not going to go through those. I'm just going to touch on a couple things, but these are some things that are actually very good to renew our minds to. It kind of points you in a direction as a child of God and, and how we are to look, how are we are to live in that abundant life. And, and just so you know, your flesh will not like these things that I'm going to mention. Um, yeah, there's no good thing that dwells in our flesh, we're told in the Word. So um, some of these things in these verses, 9 through 21 in this chapter 12, um, I'm just going to kind of bullet point these. It says, outdo one another in showing honor. Be patient in tribulation. We all got that down, right? All right. Bless those who persecute you. I definitely know we got that down. Bless and do not curse them. Never be wise in your own sight. Never avenge yourselves. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. 
So these are just some things that make no sense to our flesh. <laughs> as far as our feelings are concerned, these don't sound fun. But this is, this is how, this is part of an abundant living. This is, this is what kingdom kids do. This is how kingdom kids look. This is how we walk. We do the opposite. It's, it's that upside down, right side up kingdom, right? So Romans 8, 6 tells us, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The Amplified Classic says the carnal mind is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit. Aren't you glad you're not without the Holy Spirit this morning? He's our great teacher. But the, the carnal mind, it also goes on to say in the Amplified Classic, it's hostile to God. And it does not submit itself to God's Word. I don't think I have to go in, into a deep explanation of that. Because <laughs> our flesh, our emotions, our feelings, that carnal mind, that mind that's, that's driven by how we feel at the moment and what's just been done to us by somebody else or said to us by somebody else, we want to react. We want to respond. We want vengeance. Right? We want to display our wrath, maybe. I don't know. But in this end of, or the verses 9 through 12, in chapter 12 of Romans, it tells us how we should look. And actually, that is the best way to live life. And uh, it, that's renewing our mind. That's sowing seeds into our heart. And those are some great seeds. But it's just something that I, I thought was, uh, was worth mentioning. So we're going to go into some scriptures just looking at descriptors or descriptions of the Word of God. And uh, we're going to start in Psalm. You're going to be familiar with everything I'm saying this morning, but um, it, it bears repeating on a consistent basis, I think. So Psalm 119.105, it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Our journey in Christ is what? a It's It really comes down to steps of faith, one step at a time. The just shall live by faith. And when I, when I kind of just pondered on this scripture, it's a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. It's not like this giant billion lumens flashlight that you can see miles ahead or whatever. It's, it's, it's that lamp that we take one more step. How many, have, how many have taken a step of faith in our life thinking, I have no idea what's going to happen after I take this step? But you just do it believing that God's got your back, right? And um, we all have our own experiences with that. But this, just an illustration of this, my growing up years, I did a lot of hunting. And um, I was in the woods a lot with my grandfather, my dad, um, sometimes my brother. But we'd go, we'd go squirrel hunting and all this stuff and, uh, and, in the afternoons and deer hunting in the morning, squirrel hunting, and then then lunch, and then go back to deer hunting. And then at night was the funnest time. That's when we went raccoon hunting. And so that was fun. My, my grandpa had a, had a great dog, and, and um, he, he liked to treat uh, anything. But he did a real good job. And um, just, a, just a blast as a kid. Uh, so privileged to experience that. But I remember that lantern. And uh, as, <laughs> that lantern did not shine really too far in the woods. But it put out a brilliant amount of light as long as you were in a certain radius. And it was just enough to keep you safe. How many of those woods don't have paved sidewalks, right? So walking through the woods, you'd have no idea what... I mean, I can tell you some stories about Pastor Chad trying to walk through the woods. But we're not going to go into that. But uh, walking through the woods, that lantern had just enough light to keep us safe, to, to see where our next step was going to be. And I really think that's just a picture of the Word of God. That's this scripture that talks about the Word being a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And it's it's just about taking that next step. But uh, I think that was just a, a for me that was the illustration that really really kind of hit home. But um, I want to read this verse also in Psalm one nineteen one hundred five. Uh, the passion says, "Truth's shining light guides me in my choices and decisions. The revelation of your word makes my pathway clear." And how many knows? You know this whole world we're in, and it's got a lot of junk, got a lot of darkness, got a lot of stuff, but we have a lamp, we have a light to light our path, 
that path that God has laid out before us, before the foundation of the world. We have a path to walk. We have a journey in Christ. He's, he's called each and every one of us to, and we have light for that journey. And it's His Word. Amen? I, be, I believe it's His Word, and it's a lamp to our feet. And, and don't be afraid to keep walking, keep going in that same direction. Sowing the Word. We're getting into, we're getting into that. Sowing the Word into our heart. We're going to go to Proverbs um, now. In Proverbs 4, 20 through 22, it says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. And here's why it's so important to keep His Word in our heart. Proverbs 4.23 Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. So if you don't like the issues of your life, it's from the seeds that have been planted in your heart that are producing something. Your heart doesn't know the difference. I grabbed this uh, kind of one-liner, if you will, from somebody I was listening to this week, but it could have been Barry Bennett, but it says, your heart doesn't know the difference between the Word of God and the Word of the devil. So again, we have the choice to sow seeds of life or seeds of death in our heart, and it's going to produce what's in that seed. Right? So we're to keep our heart, guard our heart, with all diligence in this verse in Proverbs 4.23 says, for out of it spring the issues of our life. All of our issues in life come out of that heart that whatever's being sown in there is going to produce. So John 8.31, Jesus said, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And abide, how many knows abide doesn't mean visiting once in a while, just kind of occasional stop by a little drive by and waving. But abide means, here's some synonyms for abide, remain, stay, dwell, and linger. My kids are currently abiding in my home. One day they'll be just visiting. But they're always welcome. But uh, they abide, my children abide in my home. And we are to abide, allow his word to abide, to live, to dwell, to linger to stay in our hearts. Amen? So let's go to Hebrews now. Uh, Hebrews 4.12 says, For the Word of God is living and powerful. It's the only alive book. Isn't that something? For the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. In just pondering over this verse really simply, the Word examines you. As you sow the Word in your heart, as you read the Word, as you meditate on the Word, the Word is examining you. And it actually will expose our hearts to us. It knows that, it, right in the end of that verse, it says it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of our heart. And how many, how many have been in a place, whether you're sitting in in your seat at church, or you're reading the Word, or you're listening to something, whatever, and it's just like, boom, something comes in and just like, whoa, I'm missing it there. Or that felt like some correction coming. But that's, that's, that's what the Word does. It, it examines you. As you give it place, as you sow it in your heart, don't be flippant with the time you spend, the time you're sowing the word in your heart, but be available for it to read your heart. As you read the word, as you sow the word, let it examine you. Maybe before you, I, I would highly suggest, and, and maybe everybody has this habit, but before you even, say, get into a time of reading the word or sowing the word in your heart, just stop for a few seconds here and just say, Holy Spirit, teach me what I'm reading. Reveal to me the truth that I'm reading right now. And I'm going to get into another, another thing that I learned from somebody else also. But, but be available and be open and be ready to receive a full examination of your heart as you're reading the Word. Because God wants to speak to you. And this is how we grow up. Amen? It's not over when we, when, we, when we 
embrace Jesus as our Lord and Savior, as we receive that new life that He's given us, that's just the beginning. And, uh, and, and to be a sower, you, Pastor Chad said this morning, we're all sowers. We're sowing something. You're sowing words, you're sowing things. How many knows that a lot and a lot, a lot of distractions are trying to be sown in your heart in this day and age? Oh, look, a balloon. Look, a train derailment. Look, where's all the chickens at? You know, all, all of these distractions. And then, guess what? Those seeds, if you sow them enough, what are they going to produce? Fear, anxiety, worry, calamity, the dismay. Like, that's why I've unplugged. There's nothing good. I'm not saying it's bad to watch the news and to keep up on current events, but so far I've found no good results from that. At least, you know, there's good news out there. But I think a lot of times, where is this going to lead me if I see, you know, uh, they call it clickbait, right? Like you see a caption and it's like, ooh, that looks interesting. But I think, where is that going to take me in my mind? Am I going to be fearful after this? Am I going to be freaked out about this? Am I going to have something else to allow the enemy to come in and, and produce anxiety? So it's kind of, you've got, you got to be careful. And that's where it goes back to that verse we just read about guarding our heart, right? Keeping a guard over our heart. What goes in our ear gate and our eye gate. So let's go to 2 Timothy 3.16. It says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. 2 Timothy 3.16. So we're going to just kind of bullet point these, these words here, doctrine and reproof and correction. I'm sure we all know for the most part what they mean, but that word doctrine is simply what it sounds like. It's learning. It's teaching. So the Word of God is where our main source of learning should come from as His children. Reproof. That, re, that word reproof means evidence or conviction. That word conviction can be also defined as the act or process of convincing. So when we go to the Word of God and sow it in our heart, God's trying to convince us of who we are. Who we are. There's a lot of Scripture I'm not going to talk about today. <laughs> and I'll point you to some places that are even a great source of, of teaching on this subject. But, but the Word convinces us of how God sees us, of who we are in Christ, who Christ is in us. And that's a huge part of, of renewing our mind is, is seeing who we are. The mirror of the Word of God is so vital to look into on a consistent basis. Okay, we're going on to the word correction here. Straightening up again, it means. Correction, straightening up again. Restoration to a right state. Restoration to a right state. I think that says, that says a lot right there because after you're born again, it's so vital to renew your mind to the Word of God to return to the right state. There is a right state and it's so linked to being made the righteousness of God in Christ. You know that you are, as a born-again believer in Christ, as a child of God, you are in a right state with God. And that's, that's part of the correction that we need in the Word of God to, to remind us and to see that, to convince us, so that becomes our conviction, I am, our conviction is, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen? So, Instruction, that word instruction means nurture or chastening. And Hebrews 12, 6 says, For whom the Lord loves, he chastens. I remember hearing Jeremy Pearson's, um, if you know who that is, Kenneth Copeland's but grandson, if that means anything to you. But he, he said something years ago I listened, and I just, I thought this is powerful in itself. And again, this goes into growing up in, in, in the Lord. Um, he told the Lord he was just kind of wanting to hear from God and praying that, you know, God, just speak to me. I don't remember the specific moment or what he were, if he was specifically asking for something in, in particular. But then I just realized, he's like, Lord, even if you, all you speak to me is a word of correction, I receive it. I don't, I don't care if you speak 
whatever, if it's just a word of correction, if it's just a word of, that word chastise sounds really rough, doesn't it? It sounds, we don't use that word a lot, but I immediately think of being caned or something. I don't know. It sounds that heavy hitting. But it just, it's not, it's not that in this context. It's nurture, right? Like I just defined. Thank you. But it's nurturing and it's guiding and it's, and it's, it's building up. It's encouraging, actually, in itself. But, uh, but even if, and that, that became a prayer of my heart is, Lord, even if you just speak a word of correction to me, correct me where I need it. That, that's like a, consi- a consistent prayer of my heart along with, Lord, make me a blessing to others today that we, I learned, you know, a few, few months ago doing, doing that series. It just really stuck. And, um, but uh, I want to grow up. And, and this is all part of it as a, as a child of God, just growing up and, and sowing His Word and, and wanting to go further. And, uh, and He's got big plans for us. So let's go into First Peter now. 1 Peter 1.23, it says, Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the Word of God, which lives and abides forever. God's Word is that incorruptible seed that we've been born again by. Not, that word incorruptible means not subject to decay. And I just looked up, I was kind of looking over some things this morning. I thought this definition was absolutely wonderful inflexibly just and upright. Another definition for incorruptibly, God, speaking of God's word, inflexibly just and upright. And that is beautiful. That is beautiful. A seed, this is a, a like I, I referenced earlier in that Healing University, Barry Bennett said this, and this I think is just something that just like kind of like punched me, just like got my attention. It says, a seed carries the nature of its source. Our salvation, our provision, and our healing is in the seed of God's Word. If you aren't happy with the harvest, change the seed. And I, again, I know we've all heard this, right? Right? But for whatever reason, that was just super highlighted to me in that moment. And I thought, what do I want? You know, like, what do I want in my life? What do I want to see? And, and you know, there's areas in my physical body that aren't obeying the truth of the Word of God that I'm, I'm the healed of God. They're not lined up with what I see in the Word of God is mine in Christ Jesus. So what do I do? Well, I've been sowing the word of healing from the word of God in my heart. I mean, in my life, in my, this part of my life, I work, you know, I got a job and everything. I mean, we all work, right? But my job, I figure out how to sow God's word in my heart and take advantage of times where I can do that. Well, I, have a, I just happen to have a job. I've, I've shared that before. But I have the ability to just plug in and listen and do my work. So there's occasions where I have to do extra thinking, maybe, you know, little, and I, I might get lost in it, so I just turn on some praise music or whatever, worship music, and just have a background thing. But, but look for opportunities in your life where you can sow the Word of God. And like I said, if I'm in need of something, I'm going to sow a seed in my heart to see that produce, because the, the Bible is, doesn't lie. It's going to produce life or death. The seeds I sow in my heart. So I'm choosing. I, I go on YouTube. And, I mean, it's crazy the amount of resources we have nowadays. It's insane. I had just gave away some cassettes. Anybody know what, remember what those were? But I, don't, I think I still have a few around. But it's so nice to just go on YouTube, find Healing University, or not Healing University, um, Healing School at Karis Bible College. Boom. Play it for hour or two, go on to the next one, go on to the next one, go on to whatever your favorite preacher is, minister, teacher is. I mean, I think uh, Andrew says, uh, Karis Bible College, I think there's Andrew Womack Ministries, it's like there's over 200,000 hours of teaching. 
Don't tell me you don't have anything to listen to. And, and, and seed to sow. That's a lot of seed. That's a lot of seed. But I take advantage of that. And just preparing for this message, I'll, I'll, I'll plug it now and I'll see a note in it later and I'll plug it again. But there's a great, there's a great series, Andrew does, called Plain as Dirt. And it's about sowing the Word of God in your heart. I've listened to that probably four times in the last few weeks. But it's just a great... Did I, did I, did I remember everything I, that I heard? No, that's why it's important to keep sowing. To keep sowing, to keep sowing, to keep sowing. To put yourself out there. To come to a biblical worldview night this Wednesday. To come to Healing University. You know, just even, even here. But it's so important. It's funny... I heard Andrew say this, and in the Word of God, the Word of God is like Prego. Prego spaghetti sauce. Remember that old commercial? Where somebody's asking, is this in there? Yep, it's in there. Is this in there? Yep, it's in there. It's in there. If you have a question, if you have an issue in your life, in the Word of God, it's in there. It's just like Prego spaghetti sauce. It's in there. I feel like I did like that the best too, Mom. Was it? Did we do that? Yeah, Mom says yes. So, I'm not getting paid to advertise for them, but, but it's in there. So, just like the Word of God, if you're looking for something, it's in there. So, speaking of seed, let's go to Matthew. We're going to, this is a lot of word, okay? But, hey, you can handle it, come on. But Jesus did, how many knows Jesus did a lot of cool stuff with, with parables and talked about, he illustrated points and, and used things of the day that people were used to understanding. So, we're going to go through that real quick here. But um, it's just kind of adding to what we're talking about, the importance of sowing. So I'll read this, uh, and we'll, go, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it in a minute. Matthew 13, 3 through 9 says, Behold, a sower went out to sow. So this is Jesus setting up the story, the illustration. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up, because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. Others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, sixty and thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now let's go to verses 18 through 23, where he actually explains what this parable means. Therefore, he, therefore hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, and yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. And then following, or closing in this, 22 through 23, says, Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty and some thirty. So today... We started out reading that the thief in John 10.10 10, comes to steal, to kill, to destroy, right? His number one thing that he wants to steal is the Word of God being sown into your heart. That's the number one thing. When you walk out of here today, he's going to want to steal whatever Holy Spirit was speaking to your heart today. The enemy wants to come in through whatever means and steal that Word so it does not take root and bear fruit in your life. He does not want that. So, to sum up this, and I'm stealing Pastor Chad's uh, statement from a, a series he did that I'll mention in a second, but the best soil has the least stuff in it. The best soil has the least stuff in it. That's so strange. Thanks, Siri. You're, you're awesome. All right. That'd be weird. Hey, Shannon. All right, Shannon used to go here. She lives in Tennessee. Um, wow. Okay. What do you, this has happened to you. What do you do? Just keep going. 
So, <laughs> so I was saying, the best soil has the least stuff in it. I don't know if this is scriptural or not. If it's not, Holy Spirit, correct me. <laughs> but, but yesterday I was praying and just on the way to work. And I was like, Lord, wrote it till my heart. <laughs> Stir it up. Wrote it till it up. And I, again, I don't know if that's scriptural or not, but I want my, the heart, the soil of my heart to be receptive to the Word of God going in so it can pr- take root and produce a harvest, to produce fruit in my life. So, um, but like I said a few seconds ago, I would highly recommend, I'm doing a very quick little cliff note version of the importance of sowing God's Word in your heart, but if you really want a humdinger, of a series. It's called Sower. And Pastor Chad did this series back in 2016. So check that out. And you can get that on our website or YouTube channel probably or something. You'll find it. If you can't, just look me up. I'll help you. And then I mentioned Plain is Dirt already from Andrew Walmack. You can go on his, his website, awmi.net. But these are two great series of messages about the importance of sowing God's Word in our heart. So we're going to come in for closing here. Um, we're going to go back to Psalms. Let's read Psalms 119, 165. It says, There is such great peace and well-being that comes to the lovers of your Word, and they will never be offended. And you're sitting in your chair right now thinking, Man, do I know some people that need this. Never be offended. Hold still, I'm going to shove this word down your throat. You're going to love it. But never be offended. That's a, that's, a great, uh, that's a great hot tip right there. The lovers of the word never be offended. Pastor Chad's been talking about that actually recently in the current series. So if you haven't checked that out, check out the series we're in, Death to Life. Um, but he talked about that. And it had to do with pride, but in this context, in this situation, we're talking about the Word of God, the, being a lover of the Word, that they will never be offended. Colossians 3.16 says, tell us, no, it does not say tell us. Sorry, these are notes to myself. Colossians 3.16 tells us to let the Word of Christ dwell in us richly. It's kind of like, it seems like in our house, we let ice cream dwell in us richly. It's not just a little bit of ice cream. You wouldn't believe how many ice cream containers we have in our freezer right now. But these these are my my illustrations. This is what I'm used to. But to let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly, that's way beyond the little plastic loaf of bread with the cards you used to pull out, right? I remember those. But on a consistent basis, that's talking about letting it dwell in us richly. The Bible is always, 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 a revelation of Jesus. He was the Word made flesh, right? He is the Word made flesh. And Jesus said in John 16, 13, that the Spirit of truth, that's Holy Spirit, will guide us into all truth. And Jesus said what? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Holy Spirit is going to lead us into Jesus. Holy Spirit is going to lead us into the truth. Who is Jesus? He is the truth. He's going to reveal more and more and more and more of Jesus to us as we sow the Word of God in our heart because the whole Word of God from beginning to end points to Jesus. It's a revelation of Jesus. It's not just revelation. That's a revelation of Jesus. The whole entirety of Scripture points to Jesus. And Holy Spirit, we have the beautiful promise that Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. Here's another great uh, statement Bill Johnson said. It's best to read the Bible hungry. I'll tell you how it's not best to read the Bible, just to check it off your list saying, I did my good deed for the day. But to read it hungry. To read it hungry. How many knows if you go to the grocery store hungry? It's a different experience if you go full. Right? Right? You're going to go in there looking for stuff to feed yourself when you get home. So enter into the Word 
hungry. And I've said this before, but the way you create a hunger for the Word is to simply sow the Word. The more you feed on something, the more you're going to... your body, Like in the natural, when you eat something on a consistent basis, your body starts requiring that. Starts demanding that. And it could be a good thing or a bad thing. right? But as you feed on the Word of God and stir up that, that stirs up a hunger in you. And the Word of God is amazing because you can eat till you're full and for some reason you're still hungry. So... If you want to be hungry for the Word, start sowing it into your heart. Start feeding on it on a consistent basis. And you will garner a, a deeper hunger in you for that. Job 23, 12 says, I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. In John 4, 4, we know Jesus answered the, the devil saying, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So, to really live life, we have to ingest. We have to feed on a continual basis the Word of God. Another great little one-liner or statement made by Bill Johnson. Um, he's a pastor in Reading Bethel Church. You may have heard of it. Um, it says, read like you don't know the end of the story. Read like you don't know the end of the story. Pastor Chad kind of shared this a few times here and there. In just reading books, and when he sees a scripture, he's been tempted to just skip over it because he's like, I already know this scripture. And then the Lord, Holy Spirit, corrected him on that. So he was sharing that with us. I've, I've, I know I've been guilty of that same thing. So that's just a correction through Chad to me type things. But, but um, read like you don't know the end of the story. Don't, even if you've read something a thousand times, read it like it's brand new. Every... Every, there's a word I'm looking for. Multifaceted. The Word of God is multifaceted. Every, every bit of Scripture is bottomless. It's, it's, there's so much depth you'll never, you'll never dig to the bottom. But, uh, so read, maybe that's something, a new idea for you. Read like you don't know the end of the story. And uh, I kind of touched on this earlier, but be intentional about sowing the Word of God. And, and all of our lives look so different. We all do different things. Our, li our daily lives look so different. We wake up at different times. Some of us are night owls. Some of us are, what's the, what's the animal for morning? Early bird. Okay. Some of us are early birds. Huh? Worm eaters. Yeah. Some of us are worm eaters. Early bird gets worm. Such a strange thing. How did that ever become a thing? Um, but figure out in your life how you can take opportunity advantage of the time that you've been giving, right? We all have that, com that same commodity. We don't get more or less of it, but we have that time. We all have the same 24 hours. So figure out and ask Holy Spirit, how can I best intentionally sow the Word of God? Sometimes it takes a schedule, right? I don't know why I haven't done it yet, but in 2019, I bought a planner. It was a quarterly planner. And it was from listening to something I, a, on a leadership realm stuff. And I thought, I, think, I really think I need one of these planners. So I got it. And I'm not going to go through the details of it, but I started using it. 2019 was the most productive year of my entire life. Because I was intentional. I wrote, I didn't, it wasn't like elaborate and it didn't take me hours to, to schedule my day. But it's amazing when I put pen to paper what I was going to do, it's amazing looking back what I did. I, I, I think it was like I had a goal of reading 12 books or something, like a book a month or something. I ended up reading almost 50 books that year or something. And I thought, how in the world? And the strange thing is I, didn't, I haven't gotten another planner. <laughs> it's like, it worked! Why am I not doing it? So it doesn't take much to throw you off. But... On some level, I'm still keeping things going. Though. So uh, this is a little another one-liner, but this is this just take it or leave it. The shortest pencil is better than the longest memory. Right? That's kind of contributes to what I just said. Writing it down. So or a notepad on your phone. 
So I have a notepad. You think all these one-liners are all on my phone. I hear somebody say something. Duh, 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 duh. I type it in. I hear a scripture. Duh, 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 duh. And, uh, and that's how messages are birthed. <laughs> so, but if you have to, this sounds weird, but if you have to, force feed yourself the Word of God. <laughs> Your flesh doesn't want to do it, right? Spirit is willing. Flesh is weak, right? Kind of, I, when I think about this illustration, I think of my daughter drinking this green powder mixture. So we have green powder that you're familiar with the nasty, tastes just like grass. Green powder is like to get your veggies in for the day. But anyways, I've been drinking it for years and, and I mix it with something a little more palatable. But I just slam a glass in the morning. Well, I, my daughter's been breaking into mine, so I go through twice as much now. But uh, she drinks it with her nose held in. Right? So, so just... Force yourself if you have to read the word. I, I heard a funny story one time uh, with a minister, and it was when he, he just came to the Lord and, and he knew he was called into the ministry. And he's like, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm determined. I'm sowing the word of God in my heart. And the first day, he's like, I'm going to do this. I'm, this I'm going to get up early in the morning and read. And, and he did. And an hour later, he woke up, probably with drool on his Bible. I don't know. But he, fell, he kept falling asleep. He's like, All right, that's it. This doesn't happen anymore. So he went as far as standing with the Bible in his hand, standing on the edge of the bathtub and said, if you fall asleep, you're going to crack your head wide open or whatever. But that's, that's taking it to an extreme. But that's how determined and how much weight he put on feeding himself and sowing the Word of God in his heart. He meant business. And his life shows it, that his life has produced the fruit of all of the, that seed of the Word of God. So it's, it's hard. He's got a worldwide ministry and all this stuff, but I just thought that was a very funny thing, and I'm not telling you to stand on the edge of your bathtub. I almost fell off one time. I didn't do it, but I was standing on it for different reasons for whatever I was doing. I think drywalling or painting, and it's slick. Watch it. So, all right. I really get off on some goofy stuff, right? So, all in all, today was just, again, like it opened up, pointing you in a direction, saying, don't stop this. Keep going this direction. Keep going. You'll be happy you did it. I think this involves what I think Andrew Womack talks about as effortless change. Just that sowing the Word of God in your heart on a consistent basis, seeing the fruit of that born in your life. Because again, right, all of the issues in your life come out of your heart. And how important, how important it is to sow seeds of life. And His Word is life. His Word is life. So I can go on and on and on and on, keep saying the same thing, but, but I really want you to, uh, I pray that Holy Spirit will, will bring this to your remembrance, even in your dreams, whatever. But this is so vital. And uh, like I said, I'm, just, I'm in a very purposeful time in my life, sowing the Word of God on healing in my heart, knowing that it's going to produce fruit. The more I sow it, the more I sow it, the more I sow it. I'm already seeing the results of it in my life. I'm already seeing the benefits of this, just in this one area, this one arena. So I would encourage you, if you, in, in your life, whether it's, uh, you need provision in your life or, you know, whatever, um, we are to see what, how God, we are to think the way God thinks. So whether it's relationships. What does God think about relationships? What are good relationships? What are godly relationships? Well, he talks about it in his word. What, how does God see finances? He talks about it in his word. How does God see work? How does God see marriage? How does God see family? He talks about it in his word. So if you need, if you're confused or you lack wisdom, right? The word says if you lack wisdom, anybody who lacks wisdom, let him ask. He's going to give it to you liberally without finding fault, but you can't doubt that you're going to receive it. So as an act of faith, sow his wisdom, his word, in your heart. So I'm going to uh, challenge us all to, we're, we're stepping in this, this week, starting that series, Bibli having a, a biblical worldview. That's a great place to start, right? So I'm just throwing that out there as another thing, just to... to, to add to that announcement this morning. But, um, but 
Ask Holy Spirit how you can sow His Word in your heart. And not just that, but ask Him to reveal, to bring revelation to you of truth and truth is Jesus. Amen. You've been listening to a message from Karis New Testament Church. For more information or to contact us, go to www.karisntc.org. And remember, you are deeply loved, highly favored, and destined to reign in Christ Jesus.